In today's video, we're going to be looking at calling upon the name of the Lord. Um, calling upon the name of the Lord is, is something that's happened throughout Scripture. Um, if you go all the way back to Genesis, during the days of, of Enos, um, son of Seth, uh, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they all called upon the name of the Lord. And I want to share some things with you today about calling upon the name of the Lord, um, <clears throat> including some scripture, lots of scripture here. And um, I believe when it comes to salvation, um, the, the preacher, he sows the seed. The seed is the word of God. And I believe that God can use any part of the Bible to save a person. You know, um, let's look, for example, in Acts, okay? Turn with me to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And, and brothers and sisters, I am not one to limit God and say you can only get the gospel from this three verses of Scripture, nowhere else, um, you know, that you can't go to Matthew, Mark, and Luke uh, because, let's face it, Matthew, Mark, and Luke have the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, the Word of God, people are saved by believing the Word of God, okay? That is the parable of the sower. Um, the seed that is sown is the Word of God, and people believe it. <clears throat> now, of course, people do need to understand that Jesus died on the cross for them and shed his blood to pay for their sin. Okay? I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is we can't limit God and just say, okay, this one tiny little part, nothing else. Um, it, it, I don't believe it works that way. Um, and I'm going to show you from Scripture why. Okay, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And... Let's look in, starting at verse 26, okay? And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Uh, well, Philip would have a difficult time in Gaza these days, that's for sure. Um, and he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Can Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. <clears throat> Was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Now this very question here, it actually ties in with Romans chapter 10. Um, Romans chapter 10, we will get to that in just a few minutes. But, but remember that part where he says, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. You see, friends, this book is the word of God. 
and Jesus is the Word of God. So no matter where you start at in this book, to share with somebody, um, share Jesus with them, okay? Now this um, eunuch from Ethiopia was reading Isaiah chapter uh, 53, and um, Philip then expounded the Word of God to show him about Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And one more thing I want to point out. All this is taking place in our dispensation. Okay? Not the previous dispensation. This happened after Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit was given as a gift to the church, who indwells us and seals us until that day of redemption, that Holy Spirit of promise. So this is taking place in our dispensation. Okay. See, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water. So you see, in verse 37, you see the eunuch's profession of faith. Uh, which, by the way, is very similar to Peter prior uh, to the resurrection, where he said, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Because Jesus Christ has been given a name above every name. And uh, his very name proclaims who he is, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? He is Emmanuel, God with us. God manifest to us in the flesh. Um, as it says there in the uh, Gospel account of John chapter 1. And he answered and said, verse 37, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. See, that's a type of rapture right there. That the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So, here we have the Ethiopian eunuch. He wasn't even saved reading Romans at all. Uh, Romans had not been written yet. We hadn't even got to the point um, in Acts where um, Paul, actually this is the chapter prior to uh, the conversion of Saul who becomes Paul. So uh, there's no way that Romans could have been used here to save someone. And this is what I'm talking about here. Um, it's very important that we don't narrow it down to the point of ad nauseum to where only this tiny little part of Scripture will work, but this over here doesn't, okay? God does His work when the preacher preaches the Word of God. And it is mixed with faith in the hearers. And that, by the way, um, is exactly um, found over in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Okay, let's go there right now. Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, and verses 2 and 3, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. You see, the gospel was preached to them in the Old Testament. It's preached to us today. The gospel is the word of God. But with these who were... Um, in unbelief, it was not mixed with faith. 
in uh, in them that heard it. So, turning back to um, Romans chapter 10. Now, Romans chapter 10, um, I've been told that it deals just with Israel. Um, but we've been grafted into Israel. Now, it is important to put everything in its proper perspective to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? For example, Jesus is not going to tell us today, like he told Adam and Eve in the first dispensation, don't eat of that fruit. Okay? However, everything is there for an example, for our learning, for our instruction. Uh, to help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And, and I praise God that, that I have a King James Bible and that I can read it from cover to cover. And I believe it from cover to cover. And I'm not going to limit God and say, no, Romans chapter 10 is not for me. Okay, there is um, that which can be believed and Jesus Christ will use that um, in our lives. And so I'm not one for limiting God in that uh, at all because um, it's just not profitable. It's not profitable. Romans chapter 10. Let me, let me get a sip of water here, folks. Sorry. Brethren. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. A lot of folks have a zeal for God, but it's not according to knowledge. Um, a lot of folks have a zeal for their false made-up idea of God, and they seek to kill you. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. And folks, this is not just true of the Jews, okay? Um, unsaved people who think that they can do this, that, or the other to work their way to heaven. This is a, a worldwide problem. But the Jews are set forth as an example. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But who can live by the law? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all failed. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead. So here in these verses we see uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. Who's we? Paul. Paul's preaching the word of faith. Uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth, notice it's man now, verse 10, man, not just Israel, but man. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Praise God. Look at verse 12. Now Paul expounds further to show that he's talking about everyone and not just the Jews. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Okay, we're going to be looking at this phrase, calling upon the name of the Lord. And we're going to be using an example here in just a few minutes. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Now this is an important element of, of calling upon the name of the Lord. And I'm going to say this, some may disagree. But a person can call upon the name of the Lord and believe in their heart simultaneously. Salvation happens in a moment of time. 
Okay, it's not a long, drawn-out process where you weep and wail and moan and cry over sin for three or four days and work up enough courage just to ask God to save you, okay? Uh, the thief on the cross, uh, the one who, who went with Jesus to paradise, he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Okay, um, he didn't have days, days and days to weep and cry over sin. And this is why it's so very important to understand that the gospel is the word of God. And God can use any part of it uh, through the preacher uh, who preaches the good news to reach that person's soul. Um, it is very vital, very important that we don't... Um, that we don't put God in this tight, confined little box and say, it's only this way. Um, now, I'm not saying that we can change the gospel um, to suit ourselves and, uh, and present another Jesus or anything else. No, because uh, when we present this book, we are presenting the truth. Okay, that's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is we can't just say we can only use this tiny little part of Scripture. We can't use any of the other part that, that this person can't be saved um, by hearing something else, okay? Because uh, the Word of God is truth, and the Holy Spirit convicts the world of unrighteousness, okay? So, getting back to Romans chapter 10. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now that ties back into Acts chapter 8 that I was speaking of earlier. And how shall they preach except they be sent? See, Philip was sent. Okay, perfect example of, of Acts chapter 8 and Romans chapter 10 getting tied in. And notice that... Um, that Acts chapter 8, it was an Ethiopian eunuch, it wasn't another Jew, okay? The gospel was going um, beyond Judea, beyond Samaria, now going to the uttermost parts of the earth. And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Here we pick up with the most beautiful weaving together of Scripture um, that, that the Lord has shown me here. Um, because he's going right back to Isaiah 53, the very same chapter that Philip was discussing. Uh, with the eunuch. The very thing that he came upon and he was reading it. And so here is Paul. Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles, expounding it for us. Same scripture. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So they have to hear the word of God um, and believe in order to be saved. But I say, have they not heard? Yea, yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, All day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. So Israel in this chapter is simply set forth as an example to us. Um, it, is, it is a warning and an admonition that the Gentiles do not need to be um, like the Jews were at this time as a nation, as a whole, and even until this very moment continue as such, that they, as a nation, yes, there are precious souls of the Jews that are saved. Uh, 
But as a nation, they have rejected Jesus Christ. And that is why there has to be a seven-year uh, tribulation period, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, where God once again focuses on this Jewish nation that has rejected him for millennia. And Moses and Elijah, they're not going to come and say anything new. They're going to say the same things they've always said. Okay, they're going to speak this book. This book is complete. There's no need to add anything to it. Um, they're going to show them Jesus Christ right out of Scripture, just like Paul did for us. So I simply cannot just put God in this tiny little box and confine him to just a few certain verses. God can use any of the Scripture to reach a lost soul. Um, and I think sometimes it can be very tempting for us to uh, do the Holy Spirit's job for him. Um, you know, when, when the eunuch was there reading and Philip came upon him, he didn't say, um, okay, you know what, I don't really want to discuss Isaiah chapter 53 with you. Let's go over here to this other place. No, you can begin anywhere in the Word of God and share it with someone. Okay, but I want to show you something else here. Now, um, so I believe that people can call and believe simultaneously. They can call upon the name of the Lord and believe at the same time. Okay? But not everybody that calls upon the Lord is saved. Okay? It has to be mixed with faith in the hearer. Just like we said uh, over in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. Let me get another drink. My throat's very dry. Okay, next, we're going to look at Luke chapter 23 as an example, okay, Luke chapter 23. Perhaps you've never seen this before. Um, I have been very silent on this issue about calling upon the name of the Lord because I wanted to study it. I wanted to ponder the Word of God, uh, many scriptures, not just narrowly focus on on one chapter or even a couple of chapters but I don't understand a whole lot about scripture folks I really don't I do understand though that the Word of God is built line upon line and precept upon precept um, each and every book builds upon one upon the other until it culminates in the beautiful um, uh, revelation of Jesus Christ there in Revelation chapter 1 1 and uh, we see that that this book this book this Word of God is all about the Word of God Jesus Christ and that is why we can go to many different places to uh, reach the lost and to preach the Word the Word of God not just a tiny section of it but I'm going to show you something here in Luke chapter 23, okay? And we're going to look at the two thieves on the cross. Now, I've covered the one thief by himself before in a previous video a long time back. Um, but we're going to look at this again. Uh, Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Now he called upon the Lord, didn't he? He wanted to be saved, but he was looking for a physical salvation there, wasn't he? But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, see, he calls upon Jesus as well, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So Jesus responded to the second thief. He did not respond to the first thief. And that is very biblical, and I'm going to show you some scripture. Um, the second one um, was mixed with faith, okay? And the first one was not. Both called upon the name of the Lord. 
Um, but Jesus only answered the second one. And I'm going to show you some scripture here. Now, in the first thief, turn with me to Proverbs 128. Proverbs 128. And we'll see what the Word of God says here. Proverbs 1, verse 28. They shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. You see, that was the thief on the cross, the first one. Because that's the very thing the second thief asked him. Dost thou not fear God? You know, the second thief recognized that they were under um, just condemnation. They were getting what they deserved. They, they deserved the punishment that was being put upon them. Um, the first one, he just wanted to get off the cross. Okay, he didn't really care anything about God, but he was calling upon him. But it was for his own selfish reasons. He just didn't want to die that day. Um, so now uh, you've seen from Proverbs for the first thief, um, Jesus didn't answer him. Just as it says here, they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. But what about the second thief? What does God have to say in his holy word about the second thief? Turn with me over to Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. And verse 24, what does it say? And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You see, for those who believe in faith, at that very moment that they're calling upon the Lord, okay, faith mixed in the, in the hearing of the hearers, okay, those people, Jesus answers. Now, I'm going to share some other scripture with you. Psalm 138, verse 6 says, Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. But the proud he knoweth afar off. Proverbs 3, 34, Surely he scorneth the scorners, but giveth grace unto the lowly. Okay? That really applies to the thief on the cross. Both of them. He scorneth the scorners. He ignored the guy that was scorning. Okay, He just wanted to get down off the cross and, and go on about his business. So he just wanted to get out of Jesus whatever he could get. But he did not weigh the eternal consequences of what was going on. Uh, the other thief did. The Bible says here in Proverbs 3.34, But giveth grace unto the lowly. Okay? So, the one received grace. And when you look at what the thief on the cross said, he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. What was he looking for? He was looking for grace in the eyes of the Lord. And as I've said before in that other video, it goes all the way back. All the way back to Genesis. Okay? Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 1. And God remembered Noah. You see? Why? Why did God remember Noah? Why, why that phrase? And God remembered Noah. Because Noah had found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Okay? So did that second thief on the cross. He too found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So, look at Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Now, next we're going to go to James, James chapter 4. And I believe here we're going to close. James chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 5 through 10, right after I take another little sip of water here. James chapter 4. Verses 5 through 10. Oh, 
sorry, I ended up in John. John's good too, okay? There's no problem with John. No problem at all. James chapter 4, not John, 1 John. Okay. Verse 5. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace? Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Now, James is speaking to Christians here, okay? But we see this end result, this completion of God giving grace to the humble. Um, he resists the proud. He resists the haughty in spirit. Uh, there are so many that think, um, well, I have a King James Bible, and I've got all these books back here on my shelf, and I can just, um, uh, I know so much. I've just got it coming out my ears. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And it's true that none of us know all, all that we ought to know. And that we don't have a complete understanding. But when you compare Scripture with Scripture, how it's built line upon line and precept upon precept, and you look at these samples that are given to us in Scripture, whether it's the thieves on the cross or uh, the, the Ethiopian eunuch, that Philip spoke to, we can see that God in His precious Word does not need to be limited. That God can use any part of Scripture to save a man, and indeed He has. The example set forth in both Romans chapter 10 and Acts chapter 8 involved Isaiah chapter 53. So, calling upon the name of the Lord, quite simply, is something that a saved person does. But at the very moment they're believing, they can be calling, okay? They can be calling upon the name of the Lord as they are believing. It all happens in a moment of time. Salvation is not a long, drawn-out process that involves uh, days of weeping over your sins and, and all the like. Um, you plant the seed, the Word of God, okay? Um, you administer grace to the hearers by giving them the Word of God. And uh, uh, sometimes the best thing that you can do when you're going among the heathen, <laughs> you know, is quote a scripture. Quote a scripture. Uh, because that is the truth, and they need to hear the truth. Many, sadly, are not going to like it. Um, Many are going to have a hardened heart. It's not going to be mixed with faith um, in the ears of these hearers, okay? But some will be. Some who are not saved, they call upon the Lord, okay? But God doesn't hear them. God hears the prayers of the righteous, okay? And there's many more scriptures that I could have gone to um, in, in the Gospel account of John, um, there's an example of the Pharisees and the man who was blind, and now he sees, and they keep questioning him over and over again. Um, I could have used countless examples. But what I'm going to say in closing is calling upon the name of the Lord is done by a person who's saved. Romans chapter 10 makes that clear. But what I'm saying is a person can call upon the name of the Lord as they are believing. Okay? So that's going to do it today. Until next time, God bless you and take care.